peaceful night in the yard. Perfect for resting a bit and forgetting about daily problems. Maybe playing some video games, like Rex. Or so it seemed to be. Peace was interrupted by the shiny knowledge. Let's talk about microservices. Microservices is an architectural pattern that structures an application into a set of independently deployable and loosely coupled services. This means that the app is broken down into small services, each with a single end-to-end -end responsibility that doesn't depend on other services. On paper, it looks like this. Each service is accessible by an API call, typically using HTTP protocol or message queues to be triggered. Implement the business logic by code that can be written in a different language for each microservice and has its data layer. In some varieties, the API could be the same for a bunch of services and also the database can be shared. This breakdown can be performed based on business capabilities, which refer to distinct functions that a business performs to achieve a specific outcome. For example, we can decompose or patch up business capabilities into services for orders, payments, providers, and clients. Another way is by subdomains, from domain-driven design approach. In this method, we use the concept of core, supporting, and genetic subdomain to define our microservices. Also, we can use strategies like a strangled pattern to migrate existing code to microservices. Okay, but what is the magic of using microservices? Allow you to keep every model in your application separated, which is great for individual maintenance. Since it is a loosely coupled service, deploying new code doesn't interfere with the rest of the system, and it's quite simple. Additionally, performing a rollback is easier because it only affects a single component. Some microservices are deployed one time and never receive an update because they are working great based on the business logic. It gives you the ability to scale individual end-to-end -end functionalities horizontally if needed. This isn't possible in other architectures, like monoliths can also solve scalability issues that will otherwise require immense servers to scale a monolith. With microservices, it is possible to use a pay-as-you-go model that allows you to spend only on the necessary computed resources for your system and take advantage of economy of scale. Templates like AWS Microservices with Lambda, API Gateway, and DynamoDB enable you to pay only when the service is in use. So, with all this, it's pretty clear that microservices are the panacea, right? Well, not so fast, friends. Microservices come with many challenges that you need to face to get their benefits. It is pretty hard to maintain the entire system as everything grows. We mentioned that it was easy to maintain each microservice individually, but when you have hundreds of them, that small difficulty increases. With microservices, if you don't have the right tools to trace your requests and debug when something goes wrong, it can lead to a bad experience. We mentioned that a microservice can have an isolated data layer or a shared one. Talking about the scalability, the better option is to have an isolated data layer. Some transactions will spawn multiple services, which means they will involve multiple data stores. This creates use cases where you cannot guarantee AC transactions, which briefly means atomicity. Transactions are all or nothing, fail together or succeed together. Consistency. Avoid corruption in your data. Isolation. Concurrent transactions do not interfere with one another. Durability. Data is persisted in the DB at the end of the transaction. For example, imagine the payment microservice. It first needs to check the user account balance in the user microservice. Then, create a buy order in the order's microservice. Check the product catalog to update product availability. And finally, perform the payment. But what happens if that final step encounters an error? Well, if you don't have a mechanism to revert all the work done by the other microservices, you will lose atomicity because some data stores were updated, but not all. Lose consistency because your data does not reflect the real state of your business. It is corrupt. Lose durability because your payment data is lost. Your data does not persist anymore. To solve this, you will need to implement eventual consistency or patterns like Saga, 
that help to orchestrate or choreograph your microservices. This complicates the application design and increases development cost. Last but not least, even if you have the coupled services, you can still maintain dependencies between them without realizing it. If you don't define solid contracts for the data being sent and received by the microservices, you can negatively affect the whole system. Okay, so it is not a choice, right? Well, there is no need to be so extreme either. First, we need to clarify that microservices are not perfect. It is a pattern. Monolith is not antiquated. It is a pattern. SOA is not old. It is a pattern. Each of these was implemented at its time to solve a problem and each comes with his weakness and opportunities. We believe that microservices are great, but we know that in some cases, a monolith will solve all the problems, that a microkernel architecture can simplify a problem, or that a combination of each of these patterns will save the day. Our recommendation is this. Be aware of the pros and the cons of any pattern you choose to use and select the one that will solve your problem, not just the one that is popular right now.